My name is Doug Hall, and today I'm going to be talking about um, how you can assemble and build uh, what we call mini MECs, uh, which are these small serum bottle based MECs for doing um, basic work on um, bioelectric chemical systems at the lab. So a couple things that you'll need in order to assemble these. Um, all these materials are available commercially. For the anode, we use a graphite plate. This is 0.3 centimeter thickness. And for the cathode, we just use a simple stainless steel mesh. Now, what you want to do first is get this graphite plate cut into smaller blocks. So these small blocks are one and a half centimeter by one centimeter. And you don't need anything fancy done to them. They don't need to be milled. They just need to be simply cut, that's all. And so what I have is just a stock of these blocks. And whenever you get a material like this graphite from a supplier, there's probably a lot of dirt, debris, contaminants, so you want to do a cleaning process. The first thing you want to do is polish them. And so I use three different types of sandpaper. The first type is grit size 400. This is a pretty coarse um, sandpaper. And so essentially you just want to, in a figure eight type motion, rough up the surface, all sides. And the next step, use a finer grit, so this is 1500, and do the same exact process of figure eight circular motions in order to polish the surface. And then the final step, what we use is a aluminum particle slurry. So this one has 0.05 micrometer particles in a suspension. And all you do is just add a little drop, cut a piece of the polishing pad, and then again, polish all sides. So after you've done the polishing step, next thing we want to do is drill some holes. Alright, so the next step is we're going to drill two small holes near the top center of the graphite anode. And so to do that, I've got a 0.08 centimeter diameter drill bit. So it's a very small drill bit. You have to be very careful, they're very fragile. And close to the top, you drill one hole all the way through. And then just a maybe centimeter or a fraction of a centimeter below, drill a second hole. Okay. So now we've got two holes near the top. So the next step is making an electrical connection with a wire and this anode. So to do that, we get 0.08 centimeter diameter titanium wire. So it's the same diameter as the um, drill bit. And the first thing you want to do, when again, when you get something from a commercial supplier, is it's probably dirty, so you need to clean it off. So what we do is just take some sandpaper and clean off the surface. So this gets any dirt or debris that would um, prevent electrical contact. This gets rid of all that. And then what I find handy is a pair of needle nose pliers like these. And if you just take close to the end, like this, and you bend it into a J with leaving a little bit hanging over. 
you now insert the long portion portion of the J through the top. And it's a tight fit, which it should be, because you want a good electrical connection. And then insert the lower part into the second hole. You might need to adjust this here to make sure that it slides through. There we go. And then when you're done, you bend this up. And then in the back, just fold this down so it's flush against the electrode. So this ensures good contact. Uh, and to make sure that you do have a good contact, you want to test it. Just using a handheld multimeter. Touch at the top of the wire, down at the bottom of the electrode, and you can see our contact resistance is essentially zero. And that's what you want. You want very low contact resistance. If you get anything above 0.5, you may want to discard that one or check the connection. So our anodes are now done. Now we need to build our cathodes. So for cathode, again, like I said, we're using stainless steel mesh. It provides a very large surface area as a cathode. And I also use stainless steel wire to connect to the stainless steel mesh. So again, use the same size as the graphite anode. So we got one and a half centimeter long by half a centimeter, I believe that's Sorry, one centimeter wide. And then using that same drill bit, you just drill one hole in the top. Take your stainless steel. Insert the stainless steel through the hole. Now it's a little loose, so what you have to do now is crimp it. There we go. So once you have a crimp, you can tell it's really tight. So again, check the contact resistance. and we're around 0.2 to 0.3. So we're below 0.5, so this electrode's good. Now for one thing I didn't mention was uh, cleaning the stainless steel. Um, you can't soak stainless steel in acid. Um, to clean the graphite, you can soak it in one molar hydrochloric acid overnight. And you can do it with the titanium attached if you want because titanium is resistant to corrosion and acid. But do not soak the stainless steel in acid because it's corrosive. So to clean the stainless steel, um, typically what I do is um, rinse it a couple times in DI water and then also um, rinse it in ethanol. And then finally rinsing with DI at the end. All right. So we've got our anode, we've got our cathode. Our reactors are just these small five mil serum bottles. Stoppers and the aluminum caps to seal the containers. So what I find handy is to just take a piece of cardboard, put your stopper upside down. Again, using your needle nose pliers, grab right about here so you've got a portion sticking out and just 
walk it through the stopper. And you'll hear it. There it goes. Go through the cardboard. And then just repeat the same thing with the stainless steel mesh. Just walking it through. There. So now we've got our two electrodes sticking through here. So you just want to try to even out the spacing. Make sure that the electrodes are not touching. That's very important because if they do touch, then you'll have a short circuit. And what I do is I kind of to gauge what height these electrodes need to be at. I just put the stopper flush with the top. And you can see they're still hanging down there a little too far. So pull them up a little more. That looks pretty good. So what I do now is trim off some of this excess wire. So that looks pretty good. And one of the secrets to getting these stoppers into the glass vial is to not try to do it dry. If you try to get these inside dry, it just won't work. So what I do is just wet them a little bit. So you just take a little DI water and just wet the edges just a bit. You want to squeeze the electrodes together. Put them in first. And then slowly, in a circular motion, just push the stopper down. Go. Sometimes I find it helps to use a napkin or Kim wipe. Gives you a little extra friction there. Alright, so now we've got our electrodes in there. Trim off the wire just a little more. And the next step is sealing it with our aluminum crimp cap. So, to make it easier, what I do is bend the wires down. Put the crimp top on. First, before I do that, oops, there we go. Okay, now bend them down so that you can get the crimper. And then now you can bend the wires back up. Alright, so that's it. We just made one. Very simple, easy to assemble, and the entire reactor that you're looking at here costs a dollar fifty each taking into account all the materials. So the next thing I'm going to show you is if you're interested in doing anaerobic work, um, how to sparge the headspace and sterilize these reactors.